we're going to talk about um, log using logarithmic functions to model real world stuff. Okay, so logarithmic functions are often used to scale very large or very small numbers into numbers that are easier for our brains to conceive of. So we're going to look at three common models for log functions where we do this kind of thing, where we instead of looking at a number itself, we just look at the power of 10. So the three models we're going to look at are the Richter scale, which is the um, commonly used method for measuring the magnitude of an earthquake. We're going to look at the pH scale, which measures the acidity of um, a solution, and the decibel scale, which measures sound intensity. All right, so let's start with earthquake magnitude. Can you give an example of a number that might be used to report the magnitude of an earthquake? 5.2, 4.5, yeah. The different kinds of numbers you hear, the, a, a really high one might be like a 9. Yeah, a 9 would be a really bad earthquake. <clears throat> so seismologists generally determine the Richter scale magnitude of an earthquake by examining a seismogram, which looks something like this. And it measures the amount of movement in the Earth. So the Richter scale defines the magnitude of an earthquake, magnitude m of an earthquake, to be the log of i over s. And i is the intensity of the earthquake measured by the seismogram. So i is the intensity of the earthquake measures actual movement of the Earth. And um, s is the intensity of a standard earthquake, in quotes. This is the smallest earth movement we can detect in a seismogram, and it is just a constant, right? So s is just some, some number that, you know, a scientist, a geologist who studies earthquakes would know the value of s, but we don't need to know it. <clears throat> All right, so here's a question that I can ask you based on this function. M is the magnitude. M are the numbers like 4.2, 5.6, 9.4, you know, whatever. M is the magnitude that you're used to hearing in the news or whatever. I is the number that's measured by a seismograph. All right, so the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco had a magnitude of 8.3 on the Richter scale. And at the same time in Japan, there was an earthquake with a magnitude of 4.9 and had only some minor damage. So we want to know how many times more intense was the San Francisco earthquake than the Japan earthquake. So they're using this word intense, and intensity is a variable in my formula, right? So I want to compare the intensities i's as opposed to the magnitudes which I was given. So let's let's write down um, we've got Japan and we've got San Francisco. I'm going to write down the stuff I know here. So my formula for magnitude is the log of i over s. Right? And in the Japan earthquake, um, I know that the magnitude was 4.9. So if I put a 4.9 in here, and that's all I know, right? They're asking me about the intensity. So I don't know, I don't know what the intensity is. And S, remember, is just a number, just a constant. We just don't happen to know what it is. OK, and then San Francisco, write down the same formula. Its magnitude was 9.8, oh, sorry, 8.3. The log of i over s. OK. So now I've written all that I know and sort of organized what I know into the equation for magnitude. Now they're asking me to compare the two intensities, not their magnitudes, but their intensities. So I want to know how many times more intense was San Francisco than Japan. 
So I want to solve both of these equations for intensity. So first I should notice that there's no base written on these logs, so what do I assume the base is? 10. All right. So using what I know about log base 10, I want to rewrite each of these equations as an exponential equation, an equivalent exponential equation. Okay, so how would I change this one into an exponential? Yes, 10 is the base raised to the 4.9 equals I over S. And S is just a number, right? So to get, to get I by itself, I'm just going to multiply both sides by S. So I is S times 10 to the 4.9. All right, and then for San Francisco, I want to change this to an exponential equation. So that would be base 10. What's my exponent? 8.3. That equals I over S. So then multiply both sides by S, and we get I equals S times 10 to the 8.3. All right, so now I know the intensity of both earthquakes. I know the intensity. All right, so <clears throat> the question was to compare them. How many times more intense was the San Francisco earthquake than the Japan earthquake? So let me total aside here, forget this for a second. If one person makes $10 an hour and another person makes $30 an hour, how many times more money does the second person make? Three. How would you come up with three? Divide 30 by 10. So when you ask how many times bigger something is than another, you can answer that by division. right? So you take the bigger one, divide by the smaller one. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do the intensity of San Francisco divided by the intensity of the Japan earthquake. And we have S times 10 to the 8.3 divided by S times 10 to the 4.9. The S's cancel. That works out nicely, which is that's why I don't actually need to know what that number is to answer the question. All right, and then when you divide like bases, what's the rule with the exponents? Subtract. So 10 to the 8.3 over 10 to the 4.9 is 10 to the 8.3 minus 4.9. 3.1? What? 3.4? Yeah, 3.4. Yeah, 3.4. So it is 10 to the 3.4, which let's get a number for that so we can wrap our brains around how big that is. 10 to the 3.4, 2,511. We'll round that to 2,512 times as intense. 2,512 times as strong, right? And 8.3 is 2,500 times as intense as a, of, of a 4.9, right? So uh, an 8.3 is a much bigger deal than a 4.9 on the Richter scale. Much more damage, much more intense. <clears throat> the reason we just say 4.9 and 8.3, right, it's because the intensity itself, 10 to the 4.9 and 10 to the 8.3, those are really big numbers. And it's just, it's much easier to wrap our brains around things between 0 and 10, right, than, let's say, 10 to the 4.9. So we would say that the, um, the Japan earthquake had an intensity somewhere around 80,000, right? And the San Francisco earthquake had an intensity of 
199,526,000. So like these numbers have less meaning to us than numbers between 0 and 10. So instead of talking about the intensity itself, we just give the power of 10, right? This is the magnitude. So if you want to compare, yeah, go ahead, Nico. Okay. So if you want to compare the intensities of two earthquakes, you can just subtract the magnitudes, and 10 to that power will be how many times more intense it is. Or in, if you every time you increase magnitude by 1, you're in, increasing the intensity by a factor of 10. Right? So the difference between a 7 and an 8, an 8 is 10 times as strong as a 7. The difference between a 5 and an 8 is that an 8 is 10 cubed, right? Or a 1,000 times as strong as a 5. Does that make sense? What's your question, Nico? Leave log as is. What do you mean? I don't think so. To get i by itself, we have to get rid of the log. Yeah. So we could have we could have done it a different way, right? So from here we could have taken log i minus log s, right? And then moved log s over and then switched to exponential. But this is uh, more efficient. Yeah. All right, so this is a um, classic example of when we decide to talk about powers of 10 instead of the actual numbers. Right, so these big numbers, 10 to the 4.9 and 10 to the 8.3, those are the numbers that we read off of a chart like this. And then instead of saying, you know, 166 million was the intensity, we say 8.3 was the magnitude. The intensity was 10, was 10 to the 8.3. All right, so something we do something similar when we try to talk about pH. So chemists use log scales to measure the pH of a liquid, and that measures um, the liquid's acidity or alkalinity. So pH values are generally between 0 and 14. Pure water has a pH of 7, and it's considered neutral. A substance with a pH less than 7 is called acidic, and greater than 7 is called basic. And the pH of a solution is just this equation. pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So this is a chemistry symbol. That means the concentration of hydrogen ions measured in moles per liter. And if you haven't taken chemistry, you don't know what moles are. Um, but you don't have to know all of the science to be able to do, answer the questions about the math. Okay. So hydrogen ion is just um, an, an atom that has a, a hydrogen atom that has a positive charge. Okay. So we want to know how many of there are, how many hydrogen ions there are in a substance that tells you how acidic or basic it is. Okay, so for A here, I want to find the pH of shampoo. And this particular shampoo, the concentration of hydrogen ions is 7.4 times 10 to the negative 10. It's a very small number. That's 0 .0000000074 000 moles per liter. So I want to determine the pH and say if it's acidic or basic. So pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions, negative log, and then I just plug in this number, the concentration of hydrogen ions, 7.4 times 10 to the negative 10, and that should give me the pH. Okay. 
Okay, so I take negative log of 7.4 times 10 to the negative 10, 9.13. So 9.13, is that um, acidic or basic? Basic. Greater than 7 is a base. Okay. So it's much easier when you're having a conversation about the properties of a liquid, right? It's much easier to say that its pH is around 9 than to say its hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.00000000074 moles per liter, right? So when you're dealing with really tiny numbers that have a lot of zeros, it's easier to talk about the power of 10, right? The 9.13, the power of 10, instead of the teeny, teeny, tiny number. Take the log of that teeny, teeny, tiny number. It gives you something much... Um, much more familiar and easier to say and think about. Okay, so this is um, this is a brand of beer. It has a pH of 4.1. Take a few minutes and see if you can find its hydrogen ion concentration. All right, so let's go over it. So I'm going to write down the pH formula. pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay. So now, um, they told me pH this time. So it's a little bit different than the last problem. Last time they told me the concentration of hydrogen ions. So this time they gave me pH, so I'm going to replace pH with a 4.1, negative log of you know, some, I'm going to call it an X just because it's uh, easier to write than square bracket H plus. So maybe I'll, over here I'll write let X represent the concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, so before I can switch this to an exponential to solve, I should isolate the log, which means I have to deal with this negative. What should I do? Either divide or multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. So I end up with negative 4.1 equals the log of x. And there's a little hidden base 10 there, right? So this actually says that 10 to the negative 4.1 equals x. And then if I put that in my calculator, ten to the negative four point one so that says 7.9 times 10 to the negative 5. So I could write it as 0 0.0000794 or 7.94 times 10 to the negative 5. Right, that E negative 5 means move the decimal place 5 to the left. So I put in four zeros. Um, to be able to move it to 5 to the left. So either of these would be an acceptable answer. So you can see why we might say, we might prefer to use pH and say, oh, um, red lager has a pH of 4.1 instead of saying, a oh, red lager has a hydrogen ion concentration of 0 0.0000794 moles per liter. <clears throat> so slightly different than the earthquake example, this time if you increase pH, you decrease ion concentration. So when before when we were talking about Richter scale, when you increase magnitude, that increased intensity by a factor of 10. Now when you increase pH, it decreases the ion concentration by a factor of 10. All right, one more log scale. Common one is how the way we measure noise with something called the decibel scale. Um, the 
units are called decibels um, after in honor of the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell. Decibel. So <clears throat> the decibel scale was designed to reflect human perception of sound instead of the way like a machine measures the intensity of sound. So the decibel scale, like the pH scale for acidity or the Richter scale for earthquakes, is logarithmic. Noise levels are measured in units called decibels, dB for short. And average conversation levels measure about 50 decibels. So when you talk to somebody else, you're generally at about 50 decibels. So I naught is just a constant. It's 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. That's the intensity and intensity of sound measured by like a machine. And that is the power of a reference sound. And this reference sound is the faintest sound that a human's able to hear. It has um, an intensity of 10 to the negative 12. And we're going to let I, without the subscript, represent the intensity of a sound that we hear. So then we measure noise in decibels using a log scale. Um, N is going to stand for noise, and it's 10 times the log of I over I naught. And remember, I naught's just a number. So this is kind of similar to the earthquake one where it was the log of the intensity over S, and S was the smallest detectable earthquake. This is the smallest detectable sound. So I over I naught tells us the relative in intensity of a sound compared with the smallest possible sound. All right, so if I over I naught is 100, let's calculate the noise. So I'm just going to write down my formula, 10 times the log of I over I naught. Okay, so they're telling me I over I naught is 100, so I can replace this I over I naught with a 100. So this is 10 times the log of 100. What's the log of 100? The base is 10, right? 2, yeah, because 10 squared gives you 100, yeah. And so 10 times 2 is 20 decibels. So if I over I naught is 100, we would measure that as 20 decibels. What if I increased I over I naught to 1,000? N would be 10 times the log of 1,000. So 30, yeah, because the log of 1,000 is 3. 10 times 3 is 30 decibels. <clears throat> so an increase of 10 decibels means increasing the intensity by a factor of 10. So the um, intensity of a typical rock band is 10 to the negative 1. What would the decibel level of a typical rock band be? So noise is 10 times the log of I over I naught. I gave me I, right? This is intensity, so that's I, 10 to the negative 1. I naught, they gave me way back in the beginning of the problem, right? They told me that I naught is 10 to the negative 12. It's the faintest discernible sound. All right, so I'll just put this all in my calculator and see what I get. Actually, I don't even need to put it in my calculator. When I do, um, when I divide like exponents, what do I do? Like bases, what do I do with the exponents? Subtract. So I would do negative 1 minus negative 12, and I would get 11. What's the log of 10 to the 11th? 11, yeah. And then you have to do 10 times 11, which would be 110 decibels. 
So rock band, about 110 decibels. So the average perception of the sound intensity of a rock band is deafening. A decibel level of 130 um, will cause pain. <clears throat> All right, so how many orders of magnitude, that is how many powers of 10, more intense is the sound of rock band than an average conversation? So if you remember, average conversation has a decibel level of 50. Right? That was given away up here. 50 decibels. So we want to find the intensity um, so that we can compare it to the intensity of a rock band. So noise is 10 times the log of i over 10 to the negative 12. And for a typical conversation, noise is 50. And I just want to solve this for i. What should I do first? Divide by 10. Yes, I should isolate the log. So I get 5 is equal to the log of i over 10 to the negative 12. Now what? Great. So this is a base 10, right? So this says that 10 to the fifth equals i over 10 to the negative 12. Then just multiply both sides by 10 to the negative 12. So i is 10 to the fifth times 10 to the negative 12. Multiplying like bases adds the exponents. So this would be 10 to the negative 7. OK, so conversation intensity is 10 to the negative 7. And the intensity of a band, I told us in the previous question, was um, 10 to the negative 1, right? How much bigger is 10 to the negative 1 than 10 to the negative 7? Six. Yeah. There are six powers of 10. It's 10 to the 6 times as intense, which would be a million times as intense. Yeah. So when you go the experience of going to a concert, the intensity of the sound that you are hearing is a million times the intensity of a typical conversation. So several different ways we can say this. Six orders of magnitude greater. That's six powers of 10 greater. Or we can say 10 to the 6 times or 1 million times as intense. Yeah. That is not a coincidence. That power of six corresponds with the 60 decibel increase. Yeah. yeah. Good observation. Yeah. So, right, conversation had um, a decibel level of 50, right? Go back and look at this. Conversation had a decibel level of 50. That was given, right? We knew that. And then we calculated the decibel level of a rock band to be 110. Right? The difference between 110 and 50 is 60 decibels. So the 60 decibels corresponds to 6 powers of 10 
or six orders of magnitude um, more intense. So 66. Yeah. So if I wanted to compare two sounds, one of which was um, 20 decibels and one of which was 80 decibels, that's a 60, I uh, should have chose different numbers, one of which was 20 decibels and one of which was 100 decibels, right? That's a difference of 80 decibels, which means it would be 10 to the 8 times more intense, 8 powers of magnitude more intense. All right, so another place where we see um, a log scale used is to measure the brightness of a star. And so here, and we use the word magnitude just like we do with um, earthquakes. So the magnitude of a star's brightness is um, negative 2.5 times the log of its brightness divided by a reference brightness, you know, some small, um, some small brightness. Um, so using this equation, I want you to go through in your groups and answer all these questions about the brightness of some stars.